Let's do this, people. What's going on? This is Mike here, Global Voodoo, and uh, we're throwing back the morning cup of Joe. For you guys that are uh, old school followers of me, for sure, you guys remember these shows. I'll be doing a lot more of these because uh, this uh, next coming weeks, my wife Kim will be off of uh, school, so uh, we'll have some more time here to do these and uh, um, giving you guys some information on reselling for sure. Answer your questions, doing the whole nine yards. So hopefully, you guys are having a great day uh, or night whenever you're listening to this. Um, for sure, the uh, got us want to got some stuff I want to talk about today, and then you know again, if you have questions, leave them in here the chat. I'll answer them for sure. I've got some questions and some stuff in the queue already, but uh, yeah, in the morning without a coffee, right? Got my Chicago Starbucks mug from uh, a good friend of mine, another reseller, sent me one from back home. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> What's up, Vintage Moon? Good morning. Good morning, Sean Coleman, Theridan, Mr. Sadie, Dan Hall. Um, Dan Hall wants to talk to about the inventory management. We could talk about that. Uh, thanks for all you guys joining here. Uh, last second little show we're doing here in the morning. But uh, we're going to get these raw and rolling here and um, get the ball rolling back with the MCOJ. One cup of Joe. <laughs> Polish this one off. I'm going to have another one here. All right. So, you know, the title of this video today is, you know, wealth, you know, building wealth. And let me break down first this you know I believe in this every day is a fresh start okay so whether you're a new reseller or established one and whether you're struggling or you're just rocking and rolling right every day is a fresh start that's what's so beautiful about being an entrepreneur self-employed right that you have these opportunities at every given time and it's 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 like amazing I mean you can go out there and bust your butt yesterday and you're just not getting the results that are coming in. But like today's a new start, guys, right? Take it as a new start. Go, don't get all down and depressed and go, oh my God, nothing's working for me. There's always room for improvement, right? I am always looking to improve my, my business. And it's it's so simple to like think that way. But if you just imply that to your business and think fresh start, you know, work at your speed. There's all these people online and all these Facebook groups and all this craziness where, you know, there's so much going on and people are making millions and there's people making pennies and you know it's about your speed so my best advice to you is, is listen to it all right and see what you know where you can take a little bit here take a little bit there and apply it to your business but remember it's your pace it's your speed you know don't worry about what other people are doing what other people think what other people say you know it's all about your speed and <clears throat> you know when you when I say your speed work at your pace you know list Start with five items a day. Start with 10. Start to 20, 30, right? But you got to get yourself in a routine so every day you are applying yourself to your business, right? You're applying and you're listing items and you're getting things done. You're being productive. You're not just wasting time because I'm telling you what, the biggest downfall I've ever had with reselling all these years is wasting time, right? Time is of the essence. It's, it's, it's now. It's here. There's been no greater time in this freaking country to make a lot of money online, working from home, sitting here in your pajamas, right? <laughs> I mean, that's what's insane here, right? And anybody can do this. This is the great thing about it. Anybody can go out there and start making money, whether it's thrift store stuff or you're going into retail arbitrage or private label or whatever it is. As long as you're doing something with e-commerce, you're going to make money, right? But remember, your pace. So if you only made $20 today, don't look at that and say, oh, my God, you know, Oh my gosh, I need to go get a job or whatever, right? If you have a job right now, keep building this business. And if you one day your goal is to, to become full-time, then you'll see when the time is right. But don't ever just quit your job when there's, you know, you're only making 100 hours a week on Amazon or eBay. That's foolish, <laughs> right? That's foolish. You have to build a system. You have to build a platform. You have to put yourself in the right path where you are making this money on the side part-time, that's full-time money. And then you have some cash flow saved up. It's all about the picking funds, all about the savings fund, guys. That's how you're going to get longevity, period. That's how you're going to get it. 
but every day, every month, every week, every year, you got to just keep making it bigger and better, right? And always, always, always start looking at other opportunities. Don't get stuck in a rut where it's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just I'm buying the same thing over and over and over. Go outside your comfort zone. We talked about this uh, with Andrew and, and Pete and the Resellers Roundtable and these shows. You know, kind of think out of the box. Look at different items that are out there, and and find different ways of selling. Really, right? If you're only doing buy it now, best offer on eBay, use the auctions. You know, this, there's a lot of uproar of like, oh my God, if I want to do a, a one day or three day auction now, it's going to cost me a dollar. That's a dollar, guys. What 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 can you <laughs> think about this? Go out today, do your thing, and walk around the stores and tell me what you could buy for a dollar. You can't even buy a dollar pop at freaking Walmart when you're checking out. It's a dollar eighty, <laughs> um, right? It's that's the thing. You know, you can't. That's not. How do you even say this? It's, it's not. It's the cost of doing business. Sure, on eBay, it's their platform, it's their sandbox. But here's the thing: it's a dollar. So if you're selling an eight dollar item, yeah, that's that's dipping in your margins. But if you're going after stuff that's twenty dollars, forty dollars, fifty dollars, that dollar is nothing, guys. It's nothing. It's, it's the same thing with the Amazon. Oh, there's the fees are too high over there. Not if you're selling the right stuff or you've got volumes of it, right? You got to think of it like that. Don't don't let that hold you back and say, oh, I'm not, I don't do three day auctions because a dollar. Or don't let it hold you back and say, oh, I've done auctions before, but it's been four or five years. Things have changed, guys. Things have changed where now you can throw these items to auction, whether it's vintage electronics or mid-century modern or clothing. If you're doing clothing, that's the biggest thing, right? Um, I think a lot of you guys come to this channel because you hear me talk about clothing. It's easily available at all these thrift stores and garage sales, flea markets. Same with shoes, ties, blazers. Just figure out the price points for those. And then say, this is what I want to get for it. And throw it out there. If it doesn't sell, then you get charged a dollar. That's the thing. If your item does sell on auction for one of three days, you get your dollar. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's not it's not that much of like, why are you crying about this? <laughs> why are you crying about this? Um, <clears throat> uh, Shaitan Bear, 2387, what's up? Uh, definitely can't be selling bootlegs anywhere. Yeah, uh, stay away from anything bootlegs, anything that's fake. The... Um, it's just not the right thing for right right now, guys. I mean, Etsy, I was just reading an article last night before I went to bed. They're cracking down now. I mean, if you've been on Etsy, you know, first I'd encourage you to go look at Etsy. Create an Etsy uh, shop. Go out there and find items to sell on Etsy. I sell items every day on Etsy. But, yeah, there's a lot of fake uh, fraudulent things going on at Etsy. And not with them, with the sellers. There's people trying to get away with selling bootlegs and knockoffs, and they're cracking down. I forgot what the number was. It was like 20 million dollars worth of inventory or something crazy that is uh that's fake on Etsy. Yeah, it is. It needs to be policed. Right? It needs to be policed. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's the thing. You know, back to what I was talking about with wealth and ver wealth versus rich. What's the difference? What is that difference? People think, oh that's just a lot of money. Right? Rich is, oh I've got all the money in the world. I sit uh, you know, sit in a chair all day on the beach and sip coronas depends what you want it to be okay my idea my, my thought when I when I hear wealth and I hear rich when I hear rich I think of ooh, I've got so much money in the world that you know I can just do whatever I want for years and years and years and live comfortably right that's rich that's having rich that's power right that's you know you got billions in the bank right but for me I consider myself wealthy and let me explain why okay and I've talked about this before but you know I explain why I, th I feel I'm wealthy is because I'm financially independent at this point in time, right? Yeah, I've got bills that, that come up every every month, and there are struggles for sure. But I'll tell you what, I've got money in the bank, I've got inventory. I can I can always go. I've got a picking fund. I got a savings fund. I've got all these things lined up, where really I've, I'm living very comfortably, and I don't have a, a ten a bedroom palace, right? A, a ten, you know, a, a twenty five thousand square foot house. I rent this piece of property, right? But I'm in no hurry. I'm in no hurry to go and go buy a house out here, right? I mean, it's I'm very comfortable with what I'm doing, with where my business is at, where it's growing. It's growing every month. It's getting bigger and better. And if I want to go out and buy something cool, I can go do that. If I want to go buy a, a, a $1,500 pinball machine, I can go do that. <clears throat> do I need a pinball machine? No, I have one, but um, excuse me. But it's like one of these things, guys, it's create wealth, right? And what I mean by that is happiness too. You know, 
if you've got a family, make sure you're taking care of your family, enjoy and spend time with them, and, and do the little things because time moves on. I mean, my gosh, my daughter's graduating. She'll be going to high school next year. That's crazy for me to think about that. She graduates next week. I mean, my son, he's freaking, oh, my God. I mean, everybody's getting older. <laughs> I'm getting older, you know, and um, just enjoy what you have now because, you know, things change. Things can change rapidly. Um, health conditions, you know, death. I mean, all this craziness, but, you know, take the time to enjoy your life. You know, um, if you're not that level right now and you're, you're like, man, I'm struggling, I'm telling you, it's a fight. It's a struggle. You got you to gotta keep going through, but I'll tell you what, if you can eliminate a lot of this, I like to call deadbeat costs, deadbeat weight, then deadbeat monthly expenses. Like if you're paying three hundred dollars for cable, right? I mean, that's just nonsense. Knock it off. Get Netflix. Get Amazon Prime. Right? Um, eliminate some of the stuff that you see. Like if you're like, oh man, I always I always go to McDonald's. You gotta you gotta take everything down. Write it down what you're spending. Right? Write down every little single thing that you're spending money on, and say to yourself after thirty days, what can I eliminate? Starbucks? Can I live in Starbucks? How about, you know, those, those good ju uh, beefy juice sandwiches back home in Chicago, you know? Make, the, make these a treat, right? Eliminate some of this stuff, cut down on your spending, and then you have more capital. But you also have more wiggle room, right, where you can grow your business. If you're in a situation right now, you're like, man, yeah, I, I, it's, my bills are 10 Gs a month. <clears throat> well, that's, that's the boat you're in. If you got a... A BMW or Mercedes and your payments eight hundred dollars a month. That's that's your problem, and you got to figure that out. Maybe get rid of that. Maybe get rid of the lease. You know, S slim down. You got to slim down to get up, right? If you're up here and it's just splurging money, how, how do you think you're ever going to advance unless you're making more money? If you're up here and you, and you get all this money and nothing's happening, nothing is growing for you every month, you're going to trap and you're going to come right down. You're going to come right down every time. Tell them this. Start off small. Get back to the basics. Get back to the basics of life, of financial freedom. And then you can see what I'm talking about with this wealth thing, you know, where you can just sit here and go, yeah, this is great. You know, this is outstanding, man. Look at this. It's 8 o'clock. You know, it's I'm here. It's I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. I was outside this morning at 6, walking around. I'm like, this is just amazing life. <laughs> amazing. 70 degrees in the morning here. Love it. And there's flowers. I mean, just amazing. Sky's blue, but there's opportunity, you know, and I'm seizing the day. I'm going to go out there. And I'm going to crush it, all right? I'm going to make thousands of dollars today. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get stuff listed. I'm going to give it my all to make as much money as I can. And then when I put my head on my pillow tonight, I'm going to say, did I get everything done today? Probably not, but it'll be pretty darn close. Have these little checklists, guys. I mean, I'm telling you. I've got these notebooks like this written down. This is what I'm doing today. We'll see how far I go down the list. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, you know, just eliminate some of the stuff. You're drinking too much pop. You see what I'm saying, guys? Just slim it down. Slim it down. Um, you know, question for Mr. Sadie. Mike, being an experienced seller with a family, do you lear learn more towards eBay or Amazon these days to make the most of your time? <clears throat> Here's the thing. the You're going to sell more stuff rapidly on Amazon compared to eBay, period, right? But the biggest ROIs you're, you're going to get, honestly, in my opinion, are, are eBay, if you're finding it through the thrift route, the garage sale route, don't get me wrong. You could do the same thing with Amazon. Let's, let's say you find a, oh gosh, let's say it's a piece. Let's, 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 let's say it's a video game, right? You're at the flea market, boom, video game, two bucks. Those video games that sell for hundreds or three hundred dollars. Same with books, right? So, but you got to take that and go. What am I going to do with Amazon? Am I going to create Amazon for it's just I, it's brand new product only? I wouldn't do that. I would look at the used products. You can kill it with books or used media or video games. But that's why I, I, I still sell clothing to this day on, on eBay, used and new. And um, it's just the rate, the ratio isn't there. You know, I don't care if you have a store of 10,000 items, you're going you're to sell more on eBay with 10,000 items. If your store's got 100 items on eBay, you got to think about it, the numbers, the metrics. If you get 100 items on eBay, I mean, realistically, how many items do you think you're going to sell a day? That's the question. Not very much. Your sell-through rate's important. Understand that. You know, it's, and your sell-through rate is how much does – of my image that I put up, how much does it sell? If you're at 10%, 15%, you got to step your game up. you got to get more aggressive, right? You know, you got to figure out ways to, to sell these items quick. But I think you can scale faster definitely with Amazon, getting the right stuff in there at the right ranks, using long tail, doing all this than you can with eBay. I think you can make $60,000 a lot quicker on Amazon than you can eBay. 
for sure, right? But I would not neglect eBay or Etsy or you know eCreator or or some of these other platforms because you know what it all adds up at the end of the day. It's all part of the pie. <laughs> it's all part of the pie. So if you could look at that and say, okay, I see what you're saying, Mike. Right? I should grab some of the stuff I'm finding that's cheap, that's clothing. That it's if it's a I don't know if it's Patagonia, right? It's a Patagonia shirt. And it's two bucks, and you can get twenty five thirty for it. Or if it's a nice fleece jacket or something of that nature, it's 50, 60, 70 bucks. Why not? Why are you going to leave that behind? You know, there should be no excuse right now with clothing, guys. I mean, people say, oh, it's time consuming. Sure, it is. It definitely is. Um, but there's processes. Figure out how to do it quicker. One of the, if you look on eBay right now and look at some of the clothing guys that are out there, or women, selling in, in volumes, there's one guy that comes to mind that is in Las Vegas and... I post this in the Facebook group we have, Resellers Roundtable. The listings are, gar are garbage. The pictures are awful. But he's pulling in 15, 20K a month. You know, there's a big debate. Well, do I need to have all these clear pictures? Yeah, I mean, you want to give yourself, a, you know, you want your product to be what it is. You want it to present it nice. You want it to, you want all the bells and whistles. You want it to stand out. But I'll tell you what, I don't even think it matters anymore. Honestly, it doesn't matter. <laughs> People are throwing things on their chairs, their floors. And there's people doing it in big volume, selling it for big volume. So test it out, see if it works. Um, you know, if you want, I can share that person's eBay store and, and the group. And you can check it out, and you tell me if you tell me what they're doing and what they're doing wrong, what they're doing right. <laughs> so, uh, all right, moving on to the second cup here. Wild thing. Yeah, I mean, it's like Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson's in the house. What's up, dude? Uh, good to hear from you, man. Hope everything's going okay for you, bud. Uh, less stuff, more freedom, as a friend of mine says. Yeah, I mean, this is this. What I love about this job is the freedom, honestly. You know, um, I don't have to wake up every morning. I do, <laughs> you know, but I can do whatever I want, right? If I want to go right now and just get in the car and cruise around and, you know, go sightseeing, I could do that, right? If I, if I want to take my metal detector out and just walk around the desert, I can do that too. I could do whatever I want to do. Why? Because I built this lifestyle, right? If I want to sit in my back patio tonight at six o'clock and just suck down four Coronas, I can do that, All right? It's just what's, what do you want to do? <laughs> what do you want to do? Um, and then and then figure out what you want to do and build it. This is the easiest way to do this, guys. I'm telling you. I mean, there's lots of businesses out there. There's, you know, um, lots of there's jobs out there. There's college. There's all this stuff like this. But I'm telling you what, you don't need a college degree to go out there and and start reselling, okay? You don't, you know. And a lot of a lot of people I talk to have college degrees. I mean, they're, you know, they, they spent a lot to get there. Take for example, my wife. She's a teacher. You know, her, her, we spent all this money for her college. How much do you think she makes a year? You know, I mean, it's 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 a job. But I'll tell you what, you know, I don't even know if she can afford to stay in an apartment with two kids if something was to happen to me. You know what I mean? Re realistically, realistically. It's not a lot of money, right? Um, but it's just, you know, you can start off this business with $5, $10. If you think I'm nuts, right, you got to scale it up. But, you know, go on my website, pickforprofit.com. I'm doing this $10 challenge thing. You can go back on YouTube here. I was doing the $6 challenge. It's, it's, it's doable. It's scalable, right? You just you can't give up, and you got to just manage your money. That's the biggest thing I'm going to say about this. You got to manage your money. You got to manage your money. You have to be able to... Put money aside for your picking fund so you can keep going out and buying more inventory. You got to have sections of that pie for uh, your bills, your savings, the whole nine yards, right? And then get that done. That's what it comes down to. Uh, Shy Tom Bear, Global, what is the most money you've ever made in an item and what was it? Also, what is the most interesting item you ever bought? Um, well, one was that Zeppelin concentrate I sold got years back, 10000 10, Um, That was a pretty nice little flip there. The uh, the most interesting thing, ooh gosh, that's a good question. The uh, I've, you know, it's hard to it's hard to you know what? Here's an interesting one. The I was doing storage auctions years ago, and um, I was in where the heck was I? Lombard, Illinois, and uh, I bought a storage unit out there, and there was a bunch of old um, photographs in there. I'm looking through these, and, and there was some fo original photographs of, like Sam Giancana and some old Chicago mobsters. I'm like, this is freaking cool, man. This is cool. And uh, <clears throat> it's just amazing because it's like, 
it's part of history. It's part of Chicago. It was really interesting for me. But uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen, I've picked up so much craziness. And, um, but really, other than that, I mean, I've picked up Walter Payton stuff, autographed jerseys. I've Michael Jordan autographed balls. Um, another cool one I had was um, a Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris signed photograph that I got at, um, I actually picked this out of a, it was like a sports store. And the guy had it forever. And I, every week I'd go in there and I'd just, how much, how much, how much? And I kept lowballing him, lowballing him. And then uh, one day he just was like, hey, remember that offer you gave me last week? I said, yeah. He's like, I'll take it. I'm like, really? It's like 300 bucks. It wasn't certified. I got certified. I ended up getting 3700 hours for it. This was back in the eBay heyday, you know. But, uh, yeah, little things like that. Um, the opportunities are out there. I've sold baseball cards for three, four grand. I mean, I, I, I've sold some 52 tops cards and, you know, just everything. I mean, it's all, it boils down to just the stuff's out there. And when you spot it, it's like, oh, there it is. Ooh, what is that? What is that worth? And, um, like, right now, I mean, I've got some home runs out there, $3,000 items, $1,000 items. Um, you know, some of, the, some of the amazing things that I've flipped, I think, were, were some of the furniture, mid-century modern furniture, lamps, tables, couches, credenzas. Man, I used to kill it in Chicago with those. And I'd find these credenzas for <clears throat> like twenty dollars and the state sale and turn around flipping for six hundred on Craigslist. It's in demand. I mean it's all over TV too. Mid century modern. All over TV. Yeah, the uh uh Shaitan says send all the Chicago autographs my way. Yeah, I've I've got a bunch. I've got actually I got storage units in Chicago still. I gotta go back there one of these days, dig through them all. I got a ton of stuff. Little Blackhawks, Bears, Cubs. I mean, it's this goes back to like the '80s. <laughs> um, jerseys, helmets. Got to dig it up. Uh, Tina Sales, you, uh, Salas, you're my hero. I was just downsized at work, and and thank God I had my part-time eBay store going. Now it's going to be a full-time. Awesome, yeah, awesome. You know, that's that's incredible. I mean, anytime you can go full-time with this, it's such a, it's it's an accomplishment for sure, and it, but it's a struggle. Right, it's 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 a long road, <laughs> you know. Because if you decide this is what I want to do, just again manage your money, get your things, you know, your ducks in line, get everything working right, and um, just build on it every month, right? Cut down some some costs, you know. Maybe take some lower margins. Get you got to get things moving too. That's the thing. If you're going a day or two without sales, get aggressive, get things moving. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yep, Sean Coleman, I will get to your question here. You're logging off. Uh, yeah, check it out later because I'm going to answer your question. Um, all right, so, you know, again, I want to emphasize on this, you know, fresh start, your speed. You know, again, your speed here, guys, not my speed, not everybody else's speed, not the million-dollar sellers, the $40 million guys, the, the you know, all that stuff. That's, that's, some, that's outer space shit, <laughs> all right? Do your speed. Create your pattern. Create your wealth. Create your life create your lifestyle right by basically doing it day in and day out at your pace and take the information for what it's worth and move on with it right find other things and 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 just be productive uh, don't be lazy there's time for laziness there's time for burnout yeah oh my god i spent you know three weeks listing i'm driving myself mad walk away <laughs> spend six hours or a day and just walk away trust me because you can get so consumed by this and the money and the listing and oh my god you know trust me i walk away sometimes i walked away the other day i was like i just got to i just need to get away now <laughs> what song is that get away get away um but yeah i just there's times like that and you just gotta you gotta give yourself that time that breathing room to say listen all right i just need to really get out of this scenario i gotta walk around the block or i gotta pound two beers or go have a margarita or whatever or go on vacation get away <laughs> Uh, Jared Johnson, nine more days of teaching algebra two, and then I will be full time reselling for summer break. That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, you, you teachers out there. I mean, like my, my wife. You know, she's she's great. She's awesome. She loves her job. You know, and it's she's dealing with kids and she loves it, but it's a pain in the ass. You know, and she'll tell you that. But she doesn't get paid a lot, so you know we're going to be bringing back the the thrift haul stuff we were doing last year, where it's me and her. We're just going to say, hey, look at our finds, and um, we never really finished that episode last year. We still have some of the money saved up. We're, we're doing some things with it, and um, but we're gonna go back and redo it, and we're gonna we're gonna try to amp it up and, and do do something pretty cool. But uh, yeah, awesome, Jared, super cool. Uh, yeah, Mr. Sadie, easy to get burnt out. Have fun. Yeah, have fun with this too. You know, 
Treat this like a business. Treat this like a job, but also enjoy it, right? Be the Apple. If you want something really awesome to watch, go on Netflix and um, what is it called? Apple Game Over documentary. All right. Um, it's a great little watch. It tells you the history about Apple and the E.T. theory of how the E.T. game destroyed Atari and how it got buried in the desert. And then they, they go through it all. I'm not going to spoil it. But, you know, you watch these companies that are successful and then you watch how their work ethic is, which is which is amazing. Their work ethics nonstop. Boom, 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 boom. But they reward themselves and they, they are in an environment. These guys, I'm telling you, you got to watch this. The one guy that created, what was it? Um, shit. Well, he created E.T. He created the three most popular games besides E.T. for Atari and was just a rock star. And he talks about how when he got hired there, what he did when he walked in the building. He was walking in with a freaking drug, with a joint. Walked in. I mean, that was back in the eight, 70s, late 70s, I think. And just how crazy that was, right? Think about it. He's walking into his job. They're paying him. And he walks in, and he's like, what is going on here? Everybody's stoned out of their mind. They're smoking weed while they're freaking developing video games. I mean, insane, right? And that's, you know, but you see that now. Like, you know, if you go to Apple and you look at their corporate office, stuff like that, they got lounges, they got freaking chefs, they got arcade rooms. I mean, it's just you got to have a little bit of that downtime, you know? <laughs> you got to have that downtime. And, um, you know, like... When I had my shop in Chicago, I mean, we had a video game system set up. I had a pinball machine, darts. And I used to tell my employees, I said, listen, if it gets too much, drives you insane. You know, we had music blaring, man. Everybody was doing their own thing. I said, if you get burnt out, I'd rather just have you walk over here, play pinball for 10 minutes, right? Get your head straight and go back and work, you know? And we just did that. It worked out. You know, it didn't feel like a job at that point. It feel like, you know, a bunch of dudes and guys and girls hanging out. So create that lifestyle, right? Create that lifestyle. Create what you want, right? You know, if you like playing Call of Duty, then play Call of Duty, right? Take breaks out of your recycling and play Call of Duty. <laughs> Actually, you can play playing Call of Duty while you're listing shit. <laughs> uh, what up, Jay? Jay, mind body stuff in the house. Jay, uh, Dave Portman, Apple, Microsoft were created because of Xerox. Xerox missed the opportunity for sure. Yeah, you know, Xerox could have been freaking huge, huge, right? Um. You know, there's opportunities everywhere, and it's just, you know, seize them. Be the Apple. Be the Xerox. You know, be the Atari. <laughs> just watch out what Atari did. You know, their downfall was pretty much, you know, they just kept focusing on that 2600 system, and they sold so many of them, they figured, well, we'll just keep selling more. No, everybody had it. That's when they, they needed to develop another product and get into something else. And they didn't. They didn't realize when the market got saturated. That's key. That's super key, right? That Just remember that. That's probably the biggest takeaway right now from the show. Saturation. If you're in the saturation right now, know when to adapt and get out or, or slim down and start developing something else, finding another niche, finding another product, going into Amazon, going to Etsy. What's up, Andrew from the UK? Glad to have you here for sure. Appreciate you jumping in. So, uh, yeah, all right. Um, moving along here. These shows aren't going to be super long, guys, but uh, really appreciate all of you guys staying in tune with me this morning. If you guys like these, just give me a thumbs up. Let me know. Um, give you some feedback. You can go to my Facebook Morning Cup of Joe or go to the Resellers Roundtable or leave a comment here if it's not watching this live. Just give me some feedback. Let me know what you want to see, what you want to hear. But I'm going to be pumping a lot of these out and, um, and kind of getting back to this whole like Morning Cup of Joe thing because it was, I love, that's how I started. So I started on you, you know, YouTube, made a couple videos. And I said, all right, let's test this out in the morning. My first show, I had two viewers. <laughs> two viewers. I'm like, this is freaking cool. People are interacting with me. People are talking to me, man. It's freaking craziness. But, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, go out there and try things and do things differently. I just want to really get back to this. I really wanted – I had this dream of, man, this thing's going to be huge, right, Morning Cup of Joe. And then I realized, man, I, I guess I'm not saying I'm huge or I have an ego, but, man, I, I've kept, I, a lot of you guys follow me. And I really – I'm, so, like, appreciative of that. I can't believe it. I mean, just see the message I get from people, guys. It's insane. But uh, I know I'm doing the right thing, and and I got to stick to this and and get it out there because this is what I love to do. I help people for sure, and and interact with you guys that are resellers, or if you're looking to get into reselling and kind of just network together. So, uh, got Louis the Louis the seller walk away from the business for a few minutes, days makes you appreciate it more. It's rejuvenating for sure. Yeah, for sure, Louis. You know, it's get that you rejuvenate yourself, right? You know, it's like popping that energy drink. Don't don't do that though. Trust me, that's it's like crack. <laughs> 
I used to drink monsters left and right, and then I was like, man, I'm getting sick. But uh, you know, find out what your find out what keeps you going, right? Find out that thing that's like Iron Man, that thing that's glowing in your chest, right? Find out what that is, and then uh, keep keep it keep it going. <laughs> um, can you clarify what you mean, meant by eBay's heyday? Uh, says Ren. Well, back in the back in the earlier stages, right, the late nineties, uh, early two thousands, it was it was a free for all. There wasn't as many sellers as there were now. I mean, I remember getting into clothing for the first time. There was there was maybe three or four other people doing it. Honestly, at the level I was, and I was like, this is insane, right? Imagine that. I mean, my sell through rate back then was like eighty percent every thirty days. It was amazing. I mean. There was weeks that I would just list things every time on auction, and they were just gone every time. Boom, boom, boom. Everything sold. Absolutely amazing. Everything sells. Now it's there's saturation. There's people that are competitive. There's people lowering their prices. But I guess when I say heyday, it was it was like it's on like Donkey Kong, right? I mean, prices were sky high. You could sell baseball cards for premium, uh, beanie babies for premium. I mean, a lot of this stuff that – now is it, it was the beginning of everybody putting stuff to market right getting collectors together and people that were searching for these things at flea markets now they just went on ebay and were clicking buttons going there it is and they would fight for the stuff you know that people still do fight for stuff they bid for stuff now but it's not like how it was but that doesn't mean that the opportunity is gone that you can't make money with ebay there's plenty of money to be made right now with ebay just find it find it Understand the active listings, complete listings. Do your homework on the items and say, what can I do with this? You know, um, Pete Craigslist Hunter made a video uh, last week, I think it was, or earlier this week about, you know, he was just showing you, look at Brooks Brothers. People selling it for $6. I mean, that's just a waste of time. $6 shipped. Why? People are just trying to get aggressive. They're trying to get their money and get in and get out. But if you're doing it with that mentality and you're doing it with 20 items, is it worth your, if it's worth your time to list 20 piece of clothing or 20 knickknacks to get 20 bucks? Probably not. You're right? Probably not. <clears throat> Shy town uh, Global, what do friends and neighbors think about your job? I've noticed my friends talk a lot of trash about me and don't want to believe the profits you can make being a reseller. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, here, um, I, don't, I really don't know a lot of people out here, honestly. Like, my neighbors, I... Um, the two girls that live next door to me, they work for me. So they, they know what's going on with that. Um, I think a lot of the people over here that see me, that they probably think I'm a drug dealer, right? They really do, honestly. Um, they think something's going on. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I leave the house. I come back here. I mean, at all different odd times. I leave at 3 o'clock in the morning go get a pack of cigarettes, you know? I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, I don't care what other people think, honestly. You know, I've, I've given back when I lived in Illinois, right, we'd always have barbecues and Firework shows and I mean birthday parties and all the neighbors would come by and people would always ask what do you do what do you do and I tell them and some people look down at me and I, I didn't care right but you know it's just, it's like this it's like I do what I feel is right I make money I support for my family that's all that matters right that doesn't matter what other people think you know I mean one my, my one neighbor back in Chicago was always like I kept telling him like man you got to get into this you got to do this no 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 and some people this isn't for everybody honestly. This isn't for everybody. You know, everybody is, uh, sorry, um, everybody is, is got their own pace. Some people can't keep up with this. This is work. This is work. And um, it's hustle. It's drive. But, you know, going back to my neighbor, you know, they were just sitting there. And their kids would come by all the time. And, you know, they'd see my kids have all these cool things. And, you know, we had the $600 basketball hoop. You know what I mean? And it was just like, and he would look down and be like, oh, great. They got a new toy now. Or I'd have some big bloat thing in my backyard that I freaking got in a storage unit, you know? And they'd be like, oh, these look at the Francos again. <laughs> and, you know, and it pisses people off, too. They see that you're just at home all the time. But you're working, you know? You're doing your thing. So it's basically my advice for, for if you're dealing with people like that, just write them off. Forget them, right? I mean, if you want to teach people and tell people how to do it, yeah, that's one thing. But if you got non-believers or haters or people that are just, like, down because you're doing this, they're bringing you down, get it, eliminate them. Don't try to convince them anymore. Just eliminate them. Say, yeah, the hell with you. Make your money. Make your money. Then get your Porsche. Pull up in the driveway. What's up, bitches? <laughs> um, or whatever makes you happy. All right. What's up, Cody? Cody in the house from Texas. 
another freaking thrifter. We got NL Rebels World. What's up, dude? He's making videos. Guys, yeah. Oh, these guys are making videos. David Portman's in the house. What's up? Uh, yeah, NL Rebel. He's got a Facebook group, too. You can check that out. Uh, but definitely check out his uh, YouTube channel. I believe he's in Ohio's. Uh, Louis the Seller. Uh, I'm Hispanic people in my town think I'm on welfare. Those who criticize me are the ones that ask me to, yeah, ask to lend money. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, they criticize you, but they want money. Hey, man. Hey, bro, can I get 20 bucks for it? What are you going to do with the 20 bucks? Man, I'm going to go get me a six-pack. Man, come on. Give me $20, you go freaking do something productive. <laughs> Trust me, I get a lot of that back home. You know, hey, Mike, you know, you got 10 bucks? Oh, they'd be hitting me up. I used to have people knocking on my door at 8 in the morning. Dude, you got a cigarette? No, I don't have a cigarette. Go get a fucking job. <laughs> right? You know, they see you have a little bit of cake, you know, and then they're like, man, I get it. Let's, you know, let's hit you up all the time. No, I don't do that. I'll help you out, but keep abusing it then you lose it <laughs> yeah exactly no success with uh, negative influence yeah I mean, that's the thing there's a lot of negative influence out there guys I mean I think predominantly this this is what I think if you look at everything as a whole news media the world it's all negative right you need positive you need you need to get amped up every day you need to hear positive things there's a lot of awesome podcasts a lot of great blogs a lot of gosh look at this Self-help things, um, a lot of just you know things that inspire you, things that get you going. I'm gonna show you two things that I've been recently messing with. Um, that just you know I just gotta keep filling my brain with positive stuff and get things going because I I do get a lot of negative stuff. You guys see it. I mean, and I create some of it too. You know, I get dislikes, I get haters, I get all this crap. But here's the thing, it doesn't mean anything to me. But like here, if you get a chance and if you find us at a thrift store, it's called the Game of Wealth. Um, Ray Haskell and, and uh, Reg Redding. It's actually a good read, and this breaks down kind of what I was I was talking about earlier. Building this, you know, it's a strategy for winning wealth and living a full life. This is what I was talking about. Just, I mean, it's it's an amazing book. It's a great read, and it breaks down money, life, and happiness. Check it out, the game of wealth. And then here, I mean, I go to these book sales and freaking you know, church sales, and you know it. Just something like this. It was a quarter. 50 self-help classics. Awesome stuff in there. Dalai Lama, man. Oh, my gosh. Uh, M. Scott Peck, Anthony Robbins, uh, Marianne Williamson. I mean, just some awesome stuff. Just awesome stuff. You got playing in the background, working. You're like, yes, let's go. Let's rock it. <laughs> let's rock it. Yeah, uh, NL Rebels uh, Thrifting Like a Rebel on Facebook. That's what his group is. Um, you can go definitely check that out and definitely check out the group we have too at the Resellers Roundtable Facebook group. Uh, check out all the groups that you want. I mean, you can go through them. There's, I think there's what, 30 new uh, thrifting uh, Facebook groups created a day. <laughs> but go out, just find which one is right for you. Find out the vibe you like that you see in there. You know, um, I think I can agree with with uh, with NL Rebels too. I mean, you know, try to stay away from the ones where it's just all this negative negativity. You know, right, right. Um, Try to get in the ones and relate with people, interact. That's the biggest thing. You got to engage with people. You know, you got to engage. You got to ask questions. You got to answer people's questions. And uh, you know, it's like I was, I was I was looking back yesterday at the show me Pete and Andrew did, and I, I'm just like, you know, we, we give it our best. We do. We try to give out good information. And I look back. I'm like, man, that thing's got sixty something dislikes. And then I look back, you know, yesterday at it, and I'm like, dude, that thing's got three hundred likes. And that's what keeps us going. I mean, I'm, I looked at the comments. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. Look at all these people, all this support. This is amazing. Simply amazing. 300 likes on a freaking show, 24, 48 hours after it's done is nuts. But that, that's really what keeps it going um, for sure. Keeps me going, keeps me amped. I see that. And I'm like, okay, let's keep going, right? And uh, it's just never give up. Never give up. Oh, Troy says, uh, what do you think Etsy's going to do with all the money from their IPO? Do you think they're going to expand, take on eBay full force. Yeah, I think they're going to do something. They're going to game change something. I, I think they want part of the eBay stuff. I think they, um, I don't know, maybe they might just get out of the whole, they're going to keep the vintage aspect of it for sure. That's their bread and butter, right? But I could see them introducing other categories to get into, you know, brand new electronics, stuff like that. That would be huge. You know, Etsy is, if you're doing the right thing, you're using social media, you're, you're building that platform, you're getting the right items listed, it's got traffic, people. It's got some serious traffic, right? Serious traffic. <clears throat> so, yeah, they've got big money now, so you got to ask yourself, what are they doing with it? If a year or two goes by and no changes, well, what are they doing? 
Are they developing something else, or is some guy just are they just making bank? No, they're gonna they're gonna they're going to do something, right? You know, people. Um, you know, eBay might be the top when it comes to the garage sale scene. You know, Amazon's definitely the number one marketplace, but somebody you know like Etsy could easily come right behind them. Um, but Etsy's no joke, guys. I mean, they're they're putting on numbers. They're putting out sales over there too. So don't give up on Etsy. I mean, Etsy is, you know, you just gotta you gotta fight through it and keep listing stuff and keep finding what people want and and just build your empire over there. And um, you know, anything's possible. But I think yeah, yeah, I think you're, you know, Troy. I think they're they're gonna do something big. And um, I don't know when they're gonna announce it or what they're gonna do or when it's gonna happen. But they've got to. They've got to. I think they're going to be doing a whole freaking media campaign and just getting it freaking going, man, and um, rocking it out. Uh, yeah, Andrew says, we just wish Etsy would allow consignment sellers. Well, I mean, it de depends on what you're doing. I don't see why you couldn't, right? Like, I mean, you don't have to tell them it's consignment. Just list the items, right? Why couldn't you do that, Andrew? Just out of curiosity. Uh yeah, uh, Shaitan bought some Etsy share for thirty. Definitely lost some money. Yeah, just keep it, keep going. We'll see what we'll see what we'll see what Etsy does, right? Like Cody says, build it and they will come. Uh, let's see, Mr. Sadie, are CDs ungated? I'm new with FBA and found a, some hundred percent ROI stuff at Target last night. Um, certain ones, yeah. I mean, certain ones over what is it, twenty five or thirty five dollars MSRP price? Those are gated. They're restricted. Um, you know, you got to get approval for those. But uh, I believe if you're new to Amazon right now, you can still sell CDs. I don't, have, I don't think that's a problem at all. I sell CDs. I sell a bunch of them. Um, but I'm also, I was grandfathered in too with that $35 thing. So I'm not restricted on a lot of these things. Actually, I think there was somebody in the group, they were trying to sell this one that was restricted. And I was restricted from it. It's like, man, I'll sell it to you cheap. You can just make money on Amazon. I was restricted from it. But it just seems like some DVDs I can't sell. The majority of them I can. But uh, yeah, if you go to, if you go to Walmart's, you know, Target, look at the clearance bins. AK, look at the video games too. Go over there and just take a little gander, and you'll have to do some digging, but you'll be able to find some nuggets in there. But there's uh, the five dollar bin, the Blu-ray bin at Walmart. Find some honey. You can find some honey in that hole. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Andrew says Etsy's still small here in the UK, but it's growing. Yeah, um, and maybe they have different. You know, Andrew, I'm not 100 100 percent sure what, when it comes to the consignment thing. Honestly, I mean, you're in the UK; they might have different restrictions. I don't know. But um, I would just say, how would they know it's consignment unless you're telling it, unless you're telling them that, and uh, there's a restriction for that. But why? Just list the stuff, you know. Just list it. I guess that's how I would approach it. Uh, Jay says, I think Facebook is planning something in the resource space. They're working on creating their own financial platform right now to collect money. Yeah, I mean, but Facebook's allowing you to sell on there. And as far as I know, right now there's no fee to do that. So, you know, there's everybody's on Facebook. Everybody is. You know, working Facebook. People are on Facebook all damn day. <laughs> you know, all, all damn day. All damn day, man. So sell it. Go create your group. Go create your, uh, you know, your, your little buy, sell, trade. Throw it out there. Create your Facebook page for your um, your company. But here's the thing. They did, they did change something with the Facebook pages. I'll tell you this right now. It's not like how it used to be where if you have a Facebook page and you post something, that it just goes out there and it's going to reach all of your audience. It doesn't do that anymore. You know, you got to pay. If you want, if you want to send your message or you want to promote your product on your Facebook page, you need to throw a little bit of money down on that listing and boost it, and um, it'll get some exposure. But it's not like how it was. I mean, even with like my Morning Cup of Joe Facebook page, I could post something out there, and I could see right off the bat within 24 hours. It's, it's not getting to everybody, <clears throat> so keep that in mind. Uh. Cool. Yeah. Awesome, Andrew. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. How, I'm interested to hear more from you about Etsy UK. That's intriguing to me. So uh, keep me post on that or put the stuff below. I'll, I'll read it here in a few. Uh, all right. So what do we want to talk about here? I'm just going to finish with my cigarette. Oh, I want to answer these questions. All right. So let me get into these questions from you guys. Uh, this one's from uh, Flipping Footwear, Mr. George. In your opinion, what is the most effective way to spark more sales? Listing more items, lowering prices, using Markdown Manager, auctions with a low starting point, adding uh, best offer, a combination of everything or something else. Yeah, I think it's all that. I think it's all that with eBay. Every one of those. Use all those, implement every one of those in your business, but make sure, you know, price points. You know, if you're, if you're going to, I think the most important one you can use out of all of them, 
all those that were mentioned is the auctions, right? Get your price points and say, I'm, I'm happy with this dollar amount where I'm going to profit from it if I get the one bid. And do that. Move it. That's you're, Every time you do auctions, I'm going to tell you this right now. This is the key, in my opinion, right? These auctions, you keep throwing them out there. They, it gets exposure to if you have your eBay store, I'm telling you. If you have your eBay store, you got Markdown Manager going there, and you've got auctions going every day or, or multiple times a week, you're going to see things sell, not just on auction, but on your store, all right? Trust me. Just keep doing that. That's why it's, uh, auctions are worth it. That's auctions is where it's at because you can get the fast money, but you're going to get people boom traffic to your eBay store. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. You, I think you pretty much answered it, George. I mean, just all those things combined. But I would really focus on the auctions, right? Get that traffic going. Get it. Get it going, right? It, it gets a buildup. You know, if you think I'm crazy, just calculate it, right? Pick 20 items that are in your store. Write down the views before you send, do the auctions. Watch those views jump when you have auctions going. You'll start to see more interaction, more traffic, more watchers, and um, you know. But you got to have attractive items. You got to have things people want. <laughs> you know, um, if you're trying to sell things that are overpriced or things nobody wants, and you're not getting any bids, well, that's why, right? I mean, I know George has a lot of shoe stuff. He's got a good YouTube channel. You know, I mean, he's not going to sell a pair of Johnson and Murphys for ninety dollars. Those days are gone, <laughs> unless they're new. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I can't sell Johnson and Murphy, but you know, throw those Johnson and Murphys out there at the price that you think is in line. Um, but don't don't think, hey, I'm gonna get eighty nine dollars for these beat up Johnson and Murphys. You're not. You know, you're not. <laughs> um, here's one from Rob McKim. Uh, best way to use categories and keywords in eBay stores. Um, okay, so Northern Picker, who's part of the Resellers Roundtable, he made an excellent video. If you find him on Facebook. Um, Northern Picker and the Resource Roundtable, or on YouTube, Northern Picker, he he gives you a breakdown of how to create the keywords in your store. Okay, because if you go look them up, they're going to be jumbled; they're all over the place, and you got to change them. So that's going to help go through there, break all those down. But honestly, I, I this what works for me is that the I think you need to have the categories on the on the left hand side of your store. So every time you're listing an item, make sure it's in a category. All right, now. If you're, let's let's focus for clothing, for example. So you got a clothing store. Maybe break it down: men's, women's, right? Then underneath there, down there, men's, men's, size, smalls, mediums, large, extra large, right? Go by size. You can do that through everything, right? Or if you've got just if you got a t-shirts, have a category just t-shirts, right? Do all those. I know it's a little work in the beginning, but once you set up your all your categories for what you're selling, it's when you're listing these items, you just select your category, subcategory it out. You'll start to see what categories are really working because you can do the reports, pull them up, and see the whole nine yards on it. I think it's important. I, I, you know, using Google, right? Obviously, if you go to Google right now and start typing in some of these keywords, eBay stores aren't popping up like they used to, right? I mean, it's Google's changed the, the algorithm with eBay, I think. And so unless you've got something really rare or something unique or something, you know, Something of that nature, yeah, you can you can be found on Google, but you know it's it helps to have the keywords and the categories right. But I think at the same time, you know, it's not it's important, but it's not that important. If that makes sense, you know, just make sure your your title is right, your description's right, um, and you should be good to go. But you know, for organizational wise, yeah, I would create all those categories, and it makes it easier for the the possible buyer when they're on your store. They can go, oh, I'm a size large, boom. Oh, here's what they got. So thank you, Rob and George, for those um, questions. Hope I answered your, your question there and gave you the right answers. Um, Mr. Sadie, I watched a well-known YouTuber yesterday bashing third-party sites like eBay and Amazon, but has built his entire business on YouTube third-party site. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Um, I mean, I've got my own e-commerce sites. I, I, I recommend it to anybody to go out there and, and get you know, an e-commerce site, but don't. You gotta understand it. I mean, you just can't go and create one if you're struggling right now. It makes no sense to do that. It makes no sense to go and create an e-commerce site. You know, build a fan base, build a tribe, and um, you know, get that get that ball rolling. Use YouTube, use eBay and Amazon to make money. And um, if you've got niches, it's great ways to build a tribe. Use social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest to build that tribe, and then start collecting data on these customers, right? And then go out and you know you get that e-commerce site. It took me years to go create e-commerce sites. It was the, it was the best thing I did, 
but it's I just didn't start it. You know, I needed to make money first, and so I was hustling the eBay. I'm still hustling eBay, and uh, Amazon and stuff like that. But yeah, there's for internet marketers. Yeah, they well they just want they just want to sell on YouTube here. They just want to come out here. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. 29.99, 59.99, change your life, whatever, right? So, again, listen to whoever you want to listen to. I mean, there's nobody. I'm. Not, I don't consider myself an expert or guru. I have experience. I can only give you my thoughts on the matter of what all this, and um, take it for what it's worth. <laughs> but yeah, some of the stuff these people just because they've been selling for three months, they're not an expert. They're not a guru. Um, you know, keep that in mind. And I'm not knocking anybody or anything like that. I mean, everybody's got their own thing, and if people want to go out and Sell information, that's their business, right? Let them do that. I mean, hey, you don't have to go buy it. Nobody's force feeding anybody to buy anything. But make sure, you know, if you are a content creator and you're doing something like that, excuse me, but um, make sure it's on point. You know, make sure it's on point. I watched the video the other day and I'm just like, what is this? This is insane. And it was pretty much this. Let me just, let me, I got to show this with you. <coughs> let me get a drink of water first. But it was insane. I just could not believe it. And it's on YouTube. First started selling two months ago, and um, they're like, "Yeah, you know, I'm getting ready to write my book." And the person's like, "What's the book about?" Well, we're gonna be selling jeans, men's jeans. Oh, and tell us what's gonna be like. Oh, it's gonna be like a guide. You know, I'm gonna show you all the profitable items selling. I make money with jeans. Well, how's the process going so far? Well, it's a process because I gotta go through the complete listings and I gotta scan through them all and find out the right brands. Then I gotta use. Um, their pictures, the other sellers' pictures, because I don't have a database of these brands. So it's a lot of work digging up the information. And I'm sitting there thinking, hmm, so you're just going through the complete listings, like any Joe Schmo can do, and put together a guide with not, none of your experience. These aren't even your pictures. And the guy even said that. And he's like, no, yeah, no. He's like, this is great. I can break it down. I can make thousands of books. Well, sure. But you're just going off freaking complete listings. That's insane. <laughs> that is insane, right? Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of that going on, and it's like this is this is crazy, you know, crazy. Again, and I want to touch more on this. I mean, if, if people are going to internet marketer, if people want to market their products, that's fine. Do it. Just if you're into the market, and you're like, hey, I, I want to buy some some of these products. Just do your research. Do you, find out who this person is. Get some testimonials. See if it works for others. Just don't just because you hear people in the comments, oh, this is great, this is great. Actually, message these people. So a lot of these people are just. You know, hey man's, yes man's. You know, they're all part of the team. <laughs> so, uh, you got Brandon Ortega in the house, MKOJ or MCOJ. Yeah, Brandon the man. If you guys are in the you need ungating, Brandon's right there. Just click on his name or go to demystify.com, demystify101, I think it is.com or whatever it is. There's a video on this channel about it. You can check it out on Resellers Roundtable Facebook group. We got uh, Scott Reseller Shenanigans in the house. What's up? What's up? What's going on? Um, yeah, I appreciate you guys coming in. Just we're yapping here tonight for sure. Or today, tonight. See, I'm so confused. I never haven't done a morning show in a while. I'm like, tonight. Uh, we got picking profits. What's up? Yeah, he says copy paste, copy paste profit. Yep, that's all it is. It's it's you know the uh, fake it till you make it program. Yep, think for yourselves, guys. That's all it is. You know, that's why I come on here and just I hope I can inspire you to go and, and get some motivation. But you know, if you want to be a content creator, if you got some information, hey. Hit us up in the resource roundtable, man. Let's, let's shoot the let's shoot the stuff. Let's work together. Let's work together and make a team. Um, what is it John Johnson? Let me. Sorry, here my thing. You got a suggestion on what printer to use for shipping labels? I'm, labels. I'm just starting. Okay, so maybe you can elaborate a little more on that. Um, you're talking about like a printing shipping labels for eBay or Amazon. I mean, I would definitely really look into a a thermal printer, right? Look at the Dymos. Those are really nice. That's what I have. I got like three of them. And um, I'd recommend looking at those. Laser Jets, too. Uh, if you go on Amazon right now, there's, I mean, you can get a Laser Jet for $80. I mean, and it's well worth it um, to print the shipping labels. Um, but, you know, you can, some of these two in one Dymos, you can print multiple sizes. They, you know, they're pretty cool. You could do the, the barcode labels, you can do the shipping labels for eBay and Amazon. They're like, they're not that much money. And if you do some hunting around, you can get them for nothing, man. You can find them at thrift stores or garage sales or auctions. Auctions, you can find a lot, man. If you got a lot of businesses out by you going out of business, you'll find these everywhere. Um, you'll find these everywhere, and you can get them for nothing. Uh, uh, hopefully, now, hopefully, I'm pronouncing this right. Uh, Theradone or Theradin, sorry. Uh, Mike, how much starting capital would you recommend on a beginner reseller? 
you know, I don't think you need much, honestly. I think, like I said, 10 bucks, start it, roll it. Here's the thing, right? We're talking about these tools and all this other stuff, and you don't need all this fancy, fancy stuff. If you've got an inkjet printer, right, you can get all this done. Even though, yeah, you know, Amazon says, oh, don't print barcodes with an uh, inkjet printer. Man, trust me. I started that way. I never had one complaint. Did that for eight months, right? Get all these bells and whistles when you have the money and your business is moving up, right? So you don't need all these fancy things. You don't need all these apps and all these softwares. Just freaking use the Amazon seller app. Use the eBay app. They're free. You don't need to go get a barcode scanner right now. What do you need one of those for? Just type it in. Get your money going. Build that capital. Get the stuff going. And then when it's the right time to buy these products, buy them. Remember, they're a write-off too. So in my opinion, the best time to buy those products, those Dymos, those laser printers, is, is in December, right before you're getting to write it off, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, uh, flipping footwear, bartered for my printer. You know, yeah, barter, swap it out, look around. But if you're starting off re realistically, right, you need, I mean, like I said, you can start with 5 or $10, get it going, build it up. But if you're sitting there and going, well, I want to do it right, I don't know if there is a right or a wrong way, honestly, guys, right? Oh, sorry, dust storm. These little dust storms come through, and they, it's like, what the hell is that out there? Um, anyway, but yeah, just, you know, the basics are here. We have the basics. As long as you have a computer, camera, inventory. Those are the basics, right? Printing or uh, shipping supplies. Get all those basics down, and then keep building your business. Then get into the Dymo. Get into the fancier things, a barcode scanner, um, you know, but again, just I think the biggest thing you need for your business is work, hard work, work ethic. That's the number one thing you need. Now these other trick, whatever, those tools make the life easier for you, right? They definitely do for sure. But uh, they're not. You don't need those to start. Build that. Build that. That bankroll up, right? Build that money up. Get that going, and then you can go and buy all the other cool crap. <laughs> or you know, like right now, do I need to get ungated in every damn category? No. You know, if you've got the money to do it, sure, that'd be, probably be a really great thing to do right now. If you're selling on Amazon, if you're if you're not selling on Amazon, well, you can't get engaged in these things. You gotta gotta have a history. You know, you gotta build up your report Amazon. But you know, just little things like that. Move slowly. Like I said in the beginning, your your speed, your pace, right? Just because you or right right now, everybody's talking about oh private label, private label. People don't even get me started with private label, right? Newbies, people that are new to reselling, should not just jump right into private label. Okay, right? Some that you you, you hear these people. Oh yeah, I don't think about doing private. Label. No, no, no. It's not what it's all designed. It's not set up like people think it is. Okay, and I'll I'll go rampage about this another time. But is there money to be made? Sure, sure. There is money to be made, but I think a lot of people are going broke over it. What's up, Cherry Vintage in the house? What's going on? Cherry Vintage is back on YouTube. She had an awesome video out yesterday. Go check her out. She's right there. Click the link. Boom, boom, boom. Go over to subscribe. Check her out. She's awesome. Lots of info on the vintage stuff, guys. All right. Um, and for you guys that are out there that are new and you're listening to this and you're like, you know, do I do I join Pick for Profit? No, you don't have to. Nobody's telling you to join anything. Do I have to buy this book? No. Go out and watch these videos from some of these people. Like there's Andrew, there's Foot and Footwear, Resource Shenanigans. I mean, there's all these names. Get your education that way. If you want more advanced stuff or whatever, you know, then look into that. You know, if you're new, starting off too, go to the Facebook group Resource Roundtable. It's free. Look at all the stuff in there. Look at this. It's just post after post, and it's, it's amazing, right? Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Troy has been doing this for 15 years, and I still print eBay labels on paper and tape them. Yeah, yeah. I, God, I, I did that for I think five or six years. I was just so accustomed to doing it, and uh, you know now I use my my uh, my uh, what was it, my Dymo for that. But then you know I'll run out of freaking something or whatever. I'm like oh, and then I use a lot of those two sided freaking sticky papers, right? And I actually I'm pretty irritated with that because I've been buying them on Amazon. And my last one, man, I bought. I don't know. I mean, it must be coming from China or somebody's printing this. These are garbage. But you peel off the sticker, and all of a sudden. The whole shipping label, it just rolls right back up, and it's like, oh, my God. So if you've if you ever had that happen, you know what I'm talking about. It just rolls back up on you, and it's, it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, so I just left some negative feedback for the guy. I'm like, dude, come on. You know, have you even used the product? 
don't be selling on Amazon if you haven't used it, because if you print out the label, you peel one off, and it rolls up, and it's garbage. Uh, what other ways do you make money online? Um, well, I mean, okay, so eBay, Etsy, Amazon, the um, my e-commerce sites, uh, Amazon AdSense, or Amazon Associates. Uh, you know, I use that through some of my websites, my blogs. Uh, let's see what else. Um, oh, here, Google, YouTube, AdSense. I make some money off here. I mean, yeah, I'm not getting rich making YouTube videos, but it's it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, but I also got to remember, I've been on here for a long time, and I've got a lot of videos out there, So, <clears throat> and, the, and, the, and the channel's growing. So as long as it's growing and people are watching it and you're interesting, I guess, or maybe like me, I think everybody watches me because there's something wrong with me. <laughs> I got bad teeth, or I don't know what it is, but but I appreciate all you guys watching. And you know, I'm not getting like I said, I'm not getting rich off YouTube, but it's it's adding up pretty quick. I'm pretty pretty happy with it. So um, you know, then uh, you know, it's I've got private label products out there. I'm selling on Facebook. I'm selling on uh, Craigslist. I, I sell a lot of Facebook locally <clears throat> through my own little Facebook group. <clears throat> I buy sell trade locally here. So anywhere I can find ways to make money. Um, you know, uh, obviously, I've got pickforprofit.com. It's it's a site there for reselling. I mean, it generates some income, sure. Um, I, like I'm not getting rich off it, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's all different ways to to look at and break it down. But you know, if you want to do, if you've got a hobby or a passion for something, now is the time to to show the world, and and network with others, right? Creating a blog, creating a Facebook group, creating YouTube videos. It all adds up, and as long as you just put, keep putting time into it, and you get a following, you build a tribe, people will show up. People will support you, all right? I mean, I was watching something. Oh, here's what I was watching. Um, found these guys for a while, man. Game Chasers. You guys see these guys? That's their name, Game Chasers. They're in Texas, and uh, I mean, you should see their videos. Top notch. They look like TV episodes for sure, and they've got a Pathion account. I mean, people are supporting them. They're getting like six Gs a month. Just off of their, just just so they can make more videos, it's insane, right? I mean, and then there's people here on YouTube making millions, millions, super millions, guys. Um, there's 13 year old girls making millions of dollars. <laughs> there's angry grandpa out there. You know what I just watched the other day? I had no idea it even existed. This was it was great. It was um, oh god, what is it? The the Winnebago man. <laughs> The Winnebago man, the guy that was making the commercials for Winnebago, and they just kept edit, they kept filming him when he was cussing and swearing. Dude, classic, classic. No, that's off topic, but it's classic. I was busting up. I'm like, this is great. And uh, you know, and if you got kids, you know, kids, these kids. My son's always on YouTube, man. He's freaking finding all types of stuff. You know, he's watching kids play with toys and video games. And man, now is the time if you've got a passion, you got a hobby to to go for it. Not go for it. Really, just go for it. Remember, right? It's a mountain. Everything in life's a mountain, and you got that big freaking boulder on your back. Everybody's got it, and you got to hump it up the mountain. It might take you a month, more than likely it's take you years, but you build it, and um, you never know what'll happen. Shit, man! I got approached to do a TV show. <laughs> I got I was doing interviews. Let me do a TV show. I'm like, me on TV? Are you kidding me? It's insane. Um, but yeah, anything's possible, guys. I mean, just get yourself out there. You got to get yourself out there. You got to brand yourself. You know, um, I was just there. Dad was talking to this on Periscope. I was somebody here on YouTube, Grant Cardone, like sales expert guy, just a rock star, just amazing guy, right? You want motivation? You want you want to get something going? You know, go watch that guy, Grant Cardone, man. Freaking guy's a boss. <laughs> guy's a boss, man. Um, yeah, just there's all this stuff, guys. Just go out there and you know, especially if you've got something going on, whether it's a niche, passion. Or something you believe in, go for it. Go do just do do the exact thing I'm doing. You know, go or if it's reselling, just make the videos, guys. T I'm telling you, make the videos, make your haul videos, make your sales videos, right? And uh, people can help you along for sure. People can help you along. Yeah, Brandon says, yeah, I love the game chasers. Yeah, those guys rock, man. It, I'm telling you, those their videos are like freaking TV episodes. It's sickening. I would love to have something like that. It was I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> Getting in the toys and stuff, freaking cool. Yeah, profit off Periscope. Yeah, um, Periscope is it's an app that you know um, 
heard some people talk about Jay, my uh, mind body stuff in the chat somewhere. He was showing me it. And I was on there. It's cool. There's a lot of shenanigans on there for sure. There's people drunk. <laughs> yeah, I'm drunk. Tell me what to do. And they're getting like all these freaking followers. But I, what I plan on using it for is uh, hold on. Sorry, guys. No, not yet. Um, yeah, I'm going to use it for some of these Morning Cup of Joe shows broadcast in a different way. Uh, I'm going to use it when out in the field. I'm going to do like, you know, live thrift hauls. So there's a lot of opportunity for sure with that for me. Um, I don't know if I can make money off it, honestly. I mean, I guess the only way I can make money off it is if somebody says, oh, you know, let me go, let me go join Pick for Profit or, or something like that or, you know, but I'm just going to use it as an art tool for, for this reselling to get the message across that. You know, the, if you're unhappy with your job or if you need to make an extra hundred bucks or you're trying to go full time, you can do this. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure if you get a hold of Jay, he's got a social media Facebook group, too. You can check him out in the Resellers Roundtable. Jay's an idea guy. I mean, if you got ideas, man, and you got you want to know about marketing, anything like that, Jay's your man. <laughs> Jay is the man. Oh, Cherry Vintage Solo, I sell clothes, vintage clothing, designer clothing, and quality brands bringing the most profit. Don't bother buying uh, BS eBooks to by Mr. Shirt Guy who tells you to buy Bricks Brothers shirts. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, she had, like I said, she had an awesome video the other day. You know, go after the unique stuff. That's what always worked for me. I think me and her kind of jive with the same thing with clothing, with vintage. I love selling vintage. Vintage is unique. Vintage is hard to find. It's one of a kind, and there's no competition when you find it. So you can have price points that are ridiculous. You know, um, that's why I love selling vintage. You know, that was my biggest thing when I made videos here on YouTube. My first video was talking about vintage T-shirts. And I said, man, am I going to destroy myself? Am I going to shoot myself in the foot? No, I haven't. All these years later, I'm still selling them, <laughs> you know, because they're unique. They're they're one of a kind, and you can't find the same one over and over and over. So how, how can somebody lower the price? You know, um, they go after the name brands. Go after the stuff that is uh, um, craziness. Speaking of Periscope, Grant Cardone. I'm Periscope. You check him out. He's in Italy. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm trying to get through your questions here, guys. Uh, yeah, so get check, check out Jay, my body stuff right here. He's making videos too. Content creator. He's, he's talking about reselling. He's talking about, you know, he's talking about what he knows. So subscribe to him. Uh, Louis the Seller, how long would you recommend selling an Amazon FBA before getting ungated for other categories? Okay, so here's my thought, right? Um... Get your feet wet with Amazon. Get stuff going. Get understand the process of it. Making sure you're getting good feedback. Make sure your metrics are right with Amazon. And then I would really, really right now look into other categories, especially clothing. That's that's my best. My I, if somebody paid me and said, Mike, what is it? I'll tell you right now, clothing. Okay, clothing, shoes. Get in these gated categories and get in there. And because right now, I mean, you know, the the, the prime time for Amazon is obviously Q4. Right, where you can go after some of these things that are selling, like hotcakes, or some of this inventory you've had for a while is going to move. But if you want where there's no race to the bottom, there's no, there's no um, nonsense ten percent ROI. Clothing, at least for me, it's working for me right now. You know, it's it's working for me. I have no I have no complaints. You know, I mean, just look into it. You know, I wouldn't. I would look into it now because I, I really believe that they're going to just. You won't be able to get in anymore. <laughs> you know, there's going to come a certain point where they're going to say, "Oh, wait, we've got too many sellers in here now," and they got to stop it. So they're going to shut it down. What would happen if a month from now that happened and you guys didn't get on Gator? They're going to be like, "Oh, shnikes. You know, you're going to, you know, same with health and beauty and groceries. I mean, you guys can get yourself on Gator with that. You know, I mean, it's it's not that difficult. Um, you know, the clothing one I, th I think is a difficult one. Well, I know it's difficult. I tried. I couldn't. Do it four or five times. <laughs> um, that's why I had Brandon help me out and hook me up. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would look into these as, as soon as possible. But, again, when I say get in the clothing, you're not selling – you can't sell used clothing. It's, it's got to be brand new, which you say, well, where do you get brand new stuff at? That's a whole other topic, but you got to have some capital. You can't go in with 100 bucks. No. If you've got only $100, you know, go after the books, go after the, you know, the thrift store stuff. Um, it depends on your budget, but if your budget is and you got thousands, you need to get in clothing. <coughs> you need to get in clothing or shoes or you know luggage. Different scenarios, you know. 
different strokes for different folks. If you got, like I said, if you got a limited budget, you know, work work Amazon for what it is. Use eBay, build your bankroll. If it's uh, if you got the money sitting there and you're just going, okay, what do I do with this? You know, I would look into those gated categories, and um, then find okay, where do I get the clothing? Put two two together, and then go out there and see what happens. But yeah, if you're new right now and you're just and you got a limited budget or you're, you're you're struggling, I wouldn't even think about. I mean, I would think about it down the road, but I wouldn't think about it now. I wouldn't go and spend you know whatever brand is charging or whoever is charging from gating to go do that right now. I wouldn't build your business. Build your business. Sorry guys, I'm trying to read all your comments. Uh, Cody said he, he subscribed to the Cherry. Yeah, everybody needs to subscribe to the Cherry Vintage. She rocks. Uh, she's an old schooler. She's one of the OG dinosaurs over here, people. <laughs> uh, Troy says, I'm going to attempt to get engaged in beauty this coming week. Been on FBA for six months with 30 feedback. It's a solid 100%. Though. Yeah, you're ready to roll. Yeah, beauty's not that dark. I mean, you can get through beauty. You can get through groceries. You can get those ungated yourself. Um, if not, I think if you just post it in the resource roundtable, people can tell you it's not that, it's not that difficult. It's, it shouldn't it shouldn't be something you need to pay for. Um, you know, the clothing, I just, like I said, I, I paid for it because it's convenience. Like, hey, I'm tired of messing with this. I couldn't get through. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, David Portman, the cashier at Costco, gave me the look of, why are you buying 30 pairs of socks? Because I can make $10 a pair, sucker. Yep. Yeah, see, David Portman working the freaking working the working the stuff, guys. Opportunities are everywhere. They're everywhere. Um, but you got to go where I said before. Avoid the saturation, right? There's all these talk right now. Everybody's yapping. Yeah, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. I'm doing fine on eBay. You know, I'm doing fine on Amazon too. But there's when you start to see things get flooded, you got to figure a way to get into different areas. You know. And if you can make money selling socks like David Portman, he's flipping them for $10 a pair. What was that? He just made 300 bucks. If you haven't sold socks on Amazon, you'll sell 30 to 40 pairs of socks before you'll sell one on eBay. Probably even a higher ratio. You'll probably sell 100 pairs of socks before you'd sell one on eBay. So uh, go get those tags at the DMV. Sit that line, Brandon Ortega. Thanks for, thanks for jumping in, Brandon. Appreciate it, man. Uh, again, guys, go check out Brandon. Subscribe to him, and you know, hit him up in the Facebook groups for anything that you need with ungating or he's got some cool stuff going on. But uh, yeah, we'll just find that opportunity. The stuff's out there, you know. Um, you know, like I said, with the retail arbitrage stuff, go after the clearance. Don't go deep on these things, guys. You know, get a bu get a bunch of SKUs, a, a bunch of ASINs out there. Get the ASINs out there, not just one ASIN with that you drop ten grand on. Get a bunch of it out there, you know. Have better opportunities. Um, Better exposure. Uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy in an eBay slump right now. FB is good so far. Yeah, you're gonna get those slumps, guys. I mean, we're gonna. If you've been selling for a while, you're gonna know right now is the slump time. You know, the summer months. It's it's coming here. It's gonna slow down, and you just gotta amp it up. And the best advice I can give you is keep listing, keep listing, create price points. You know what we talked about earlier: markdown manager, create sales, get all that going, and then just you know don't. You can hold off for money, sure, but if you're in a time crunch, you're in a money crunch. Just let, let the stuff fly, man. Let it fly. Take the put the buy it now best offer on there. You want a fifty guy comes in at thirty. Take the money and run, right? Like Steve Miller band. Take the money and run. <laughs> take that money and just keep going and keep investing. You know that was gonna be something I wanted to talk about today. Right now is is, is the Amazon planning. You know um, now is the time building that inventory. Get into, you guys that are in the Midwest, the East Coast. It's game time now. Garage sales, flea markets, it's all happening. And um, load up. Fill up those carts. Fill up those trunks. You know, fill up the minivans with that stuff. And uh, and then get all that out there. All right? Get it all to Amazon. You need it all. Get it. Hoard it now. Get it now. And start getting it to Amazon. And get 1,000 to 2,000 items sitting there before freaking uh, November 10th. And then just see what happens. If it's your first time around, you'll be like, "Holy, whoa, 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 Nelly, Nelly, stop the train, <laughs> stop that train, Nelly." You'll be like, "Damn, man, it's freaking banked. I got ten k, ten k now." You know, just but yeah, now's the time, really. You know, for you guys out there, you know, you're rocking it here. There's garage sales all the time. We're, I'm getting ready to approach the slow time, believe it or not. You know, with the heat and everything out here, um, nobody's gonna have garage sales. The thrift stores by me here. In the one area I'm at are going to be slow because all the snowbirds go back to freaking Minnesota. Going to Minnesota, eh? 
<laughs> going back to Minnesota's. Um, and, you know, they're going to get away from the heat, so they're not going to be donating stuff. So, um, you know, that's why, you know, again, online online opportunities, man, they're everywhere. Oh, my God, people, really? Opportunities are everywhere. But if you guys are in the Midwest or East Coast, and I see hey, we got Andrew picking profits in the house, you know, he, he's hitting up those book sales. I can only – Andrew needs to take a picture right now of himself surrounded by books. I guarantee you he's got mounds of books. You know, that's how Andrew's going to die one day. All these books are going to tip over on him. <laughs> but, yeah, he's killing it. He's crushing it with all these freaking books. They're everywhere. Build it. Build the empire. Yeah, Oki Silver, dude. Try new things. Yeah, that's what you guys got to do. Try new things. Test them out. See if they work, right? Um, just find the opportunities. They're there now. They're online right now. They're, you could snipe all day long. What do you think I do? Shoot. I already I dropped 400 bucks before I even got in the show this morning. <laughs> dropped 400. I'm going to get back 1,200. And what did I do? I didn't have to leave my house. I didn't have to leave this chair. So, do, 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 pay, boom. It's going to arrive here in four days. Well, relabel, slap his barcode sticker on it, off to Amazon. Thank you. I'll get paid out in two weeks. Boom, it's gone. Uh, cherry Vintage. It's, yeah, it's a baby grab as much good stuff as you can. And if you got more than you can deal with, box it up so you got stuff October, December, so you don't have to thrift in the damn snow. Yeah, yeah. Again, hoard some of the stuff if those winter months are your downfall. Um, hoard the stuff, man. But if you if you're... If you're buying stuff and you're going, oh, I'm running out of money, and stuff's piling up, stop going to the garage sales. Get some of the stuff listed. Get that energy shot of cash flow back into your freaking pocketbook so you can keep going to the garage sales. You know, we can always, I mean, that's the fun part for us, isn't it, guys? Running around shopping. <laughs> that's the fun part. Run around, spend the money. Oh, look at the cool find. Bring it home. Hard part's getting listed, right? But you need the money. You got to keep freaking, you, know, you got to keep greasing that wheel. Grease the wheel. Yeah, Oki Silver says garage sales are popping this morning. They're popping and hopping. That's what you got to do. Got to pop and hop. <laughs> pop, hop, get in and get out. Drive around, run around like a fool, man. Oh, God. You know what I miss about here? Oh, my gosh. In Illinois, the, it was the subdivision garage sales. I used to love going to those. Freaking like 50 homes. <laughs> I'd be like Zach Urban Diggers <laughs> running, right? Here, they don't have much of those. Um, but I used to love those, man. It got to the point where, like, I was buying too much crap. I couldn't even get to the next house. I was carrying it all. Like, shit, and I got to go back to the car. Then we had a little, I was using the kids' little red wagon. <laughs> I just roll up with the red wagon to load the stuff in there. Record players, CDs, video games. Boom. <laughs> all right, but, yeah, if you could just, if you guys are out there right now with these, man, the, the, those ROIs of those garage sales, I don't care what anybody says. ROIs of the garage sale, um, auctions especially, huge, huge. If somebody's there, yeah, well, that goes for 80 on eBay, damn it. But I'll take 75. Kiss my ass, sucker. I ain't buying that for that. I'm here to profit. All right. If you see their high prices, walk away. Give them an offer. If they don't like it, you're insulting me. Ah, whatever. Move on. Ain't get no, nobody got time for that. Like Johnny Goodbyes is saying, nobody got time for that. Yeah. Yeah, turn your, you know, and also, too, yeah, summer's the time now, you know, let's get that side gig, right? Um, you're going to have some of these sales. That are going to slow down, you know, keep feeding that inventory, but then maybe build that channel up. Maybe create that blog. Maybe create that, you know, that e-commerce site if you're in that mindset. And you can do that, right? If you got the capital, start looking into things now. Start building a foundation. Start selling on Etsy, right? You can't just be stuck on eBay. I'm telling you this right now. You can make a lot of money on eBay, but branch out and start looking at Amazon and God, look at everything. Try Bonanza. Maybe... You know, I don't. I don't go freaking bonkers for bonanza. <laughs> I don't go bonkers for bonanza, but uh, you know, maybe bonanza. Maybe maybe you're the hot spot on bonanza. I don't know. Check it out. So, all right, guys, really appreciate you guys hanging out here. Where are we at with time? Nine o'clock. Nine. Ooh, nine twenty. So, uh, really appreciate all you guys hanging out with me here today, this morning. We'll be doing more of these shows here down the road. Uh, Ultimate coupon, ladies in the house. What's the best scanning app to use for Amazon? Uh, I, me personally, Amazon seller app. I wouldn't go buy uh, any of these other apps. There's just you, it all, it's got all the tools you need. Amazon seller app, everything you need is right there. I mean, I guess some of these other apps are going to give you a little bit more insight data, but uh, I think if you're just starting off, that's fine. Just use Amazon seller app, and uh, it's free. You know, you can list from there. It's, it's beautiful. You can pull it all up. That's all you need. Um, 
The only downfall with using a smartphone or a you know an iPhone or an Android is you know there's the camera action on it. So you know if you're a, a big time scanner, you know go out and, and you know that's you're, you're, it's gonna be slow. You can go buy a Bluetooth scanner and hook it up to your phone, and it, it's like freaking night and day. You'll be able to scan things a lot quicker, faster ratio. So if you're doing book sales and you're just, you're just like boop beep boop beep boop beep boop, you can go through thirty books before you you could scan one with just like your your Droid or your I, iPhone. Um, but yeah, I would definitely check that out. Uh, Ultimate coupon lady, looks like you got a YouTube channel. Let's check you out. Love the coupons. She does. I'm let me. I'm subscribing. Ultimate coupon lady. Let's check you out. Get some videos. Check her out, guys. Love to hear some freaking couponing. Awesome. Somebody new I could watch. Appreciate that. Go check it out. All right. Let me go back to what I was doing here. Uh, da, 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 da. Where are we at? There we go. NL Rebel World, you crack me up, man. I usually miss your shows, but I'm listening this morning while I wait for a UPS. So I get to listen. Yeah, dude. Hopefully I can bring some entertainment, some value, some ROI, um, and some education to your life. But, uh, you know, that's what it's all about. Just freaking, you know. So I come on here. Hopefully, I can you know help you guys out. Maybe I can, you know, maybe you're down and depressed. Maybe you look at me and say, "This guy's there's something wrong with this guy." And you know, I feel better about myself because I saw this fool on YouTube, and uh, I'm gonna go crush it today. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna be ending this here in a, in, a, in a little bit. But if you guys like this stuff, just hit the like button. Let me know if you have questions. I'm gonna get to those and answer those maybe next time, time I do a show. Um, definitely check out the Facebook group, Resellers Roundtable. To check out Andrew's channel. Every Tuesday we do a live show with me, him, and Pete on the Resellers Roundtable live show. But guys, go out there right now and, and, and you know get over that hurdle. Get over that mountain, right? Get that freaking thing on your back, that big rock that's sitting there, and you're like, oh, my God, just get up that freaking hill. Lift that thing up to the top of the hill. And even though today you might not be able to get that freaking big boulder all the way up that mountain, but maybe get a quarter of the way up, right, and work on getting it up halfway up the next tomorrow or the next day. Just keep going and pushing forward, right? You know, come up with calculated risks. Gamble a little bit. Don't go gambling with 20 grand and dropping it all on black 17 at the roulette. Gamble a little bit. Think outside of the box. Try things different, right? If you're going to the thrift stores today, you're going to the garage sales, look at things that you haven't been looking at, all right? Ha look at some of those electronics. Look at some of these LP records. Look at some of these VHSs. Start looking at everything. Don't just focus on one thing. You, you have to take the blinders off. Get the blinders like this. How can you see anything, right? Um, but just, you know, Go out there and just become great. Give it all you got. Go out there and just make it happen today. Make it happen tomorrow. Um, the opportunities are everywhere, guys, for all of us. And, um, you know, it's it's there for us. It's there for us to build this wealth, to live this lifestyle, to become financially independent, right, to do amazing things. All of us have the power inside of us to do this. I'm telling you, right? You just have to work. You have to go out there. You have to hustle. You know, you got to motivate yourself. You got to organize yourself. You got to get stuff listed. You got to do it all. So, uh just go out there and, and make it happen. Um, there was a couple questions that I didn't get to today, guys. Um, I am probably might do another one of these shows tomorrow morning really quick. And I, I'll, I, I apologize for you guys. I didn't answer your questions. I know Sean Coleman, <coughs> Gene, and Dan. I'm going to get to those tomorrow. I'll do one just for you guys. Um, and any of you guys that leave questions down below for sure. Um, but I got to boogie out here. I got some stuff I got to do. I got to go hustle. I got to make my money. Right? Uh, just go out there and just be yourself. Be you. Uh, stay true. And... Um, you know, don't stress out. Give it, give it your all. Make today count, right? Make today count. Make today say, hey, I'm gonna put out my 40 listings today. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my 40, 30 to 40 listings. I'm gonna knock it out. Pick up the baseball bat and hit the freaking home run, people. I'm out of here. Peace. Thanks for watching.